Hello, watercolor students. Um, I mentioned briefly at our critique yesterday of the stippling that you're going to be setting up your paper for earth tones, and we're going to work with wax and salt and leaving white. And you're going to pick one of those beautiful images of fruit and vegetables and do a really careful, elaborate gesture drawing, get it really accurate. Um, using a grid is optional. But if you do, you'll need to do your homemade transfer paper to get it on the watercolor paper. What I'm going to do first is show you the first steps in the warm-up. The measurements are in that other video. And I'm going to show you how your earth tone scale should look. Biggest mistake people make, similar to the first day of class, is they make the paint too saturated and the earth tones too dark. These should be really pale and light and transparent. And we're going to do six steps. We're going to skip the tertiaries and do each color between those, adding a little bit of brown. So I'm going to demonstrate the saturation and the technique that you want to use. And we're going to label everything first if you haven't already. The key is to paint them every other and let them dry. Because if you don't, they end up running together. The other key is to make sure they're all the exact saturation. The reason I have you have several attempts on the warm-up is that it takes a while to get this right and it helps to have a piece of scratch watercolor paper to test because we don't want back runs. This is all even wash. This whole warm-up is even wash. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. I'm not going to do the drawing part in this video. This is simply the earth tones, the wax, and the salt. And then in a video after that, I'm going to demonstrate how to start your rendering for the gesture drawing of your subject. Okay, so here we go. You're gonna need your watercolor paper, your palette. You're gonna need some salt from the kitchen. You may also use any kind of sea salt, kosher salt, whatever salt is around is great to use. And you're also gonna need a candle, ideally a white one. I was able to find residue of a candle. That's all you need is a tiny bit of wax. If you don't have it, you can use a different color candle or a white crayon, anything waxy. And if you don't have it, maybe eventually if you see someone who may, you can borrow a little piece of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the earth tones. You have your water here, and the only brushes we're using are flat. Big flat, what we're gonna use in the big squares, and then medium flat, we're gonna use for the earth tones. So if I'm gonna label this, the first one is red plus mud. I'm just going to do R plus mud. The next one's going to be orange plus mud, then yellow plus mud, then green plus mud, then blue plus mud, then violet plus mud. So I'm going to be filling every other so that they don't run together. And be, be conscious of how light I'm going to do this. So, you know, as we do, we always put the water in here first. And whatever paint is left on the palette is fine because every color is in mud so it's fine to use whatever's there but I'm gonna use red real lightly and I'm gonna put a little bit of brown the brown in this palette is very reddish so I'm gonna add a little green and kinda make my own mud over here you can see I've neutralized it, but it still feels red. You don't want to lose the red vibe of it. And then before I apply this, I'm going to make a test down here and see. See, that's too dark. So I'm going to add more water. And of course, you always want to have a paper towel handy. Here's this. I'm going to add more water, a little more brownish. That's better. So now I'm going to test again here. That's better. If your wash is any darker than that, you've, you've gone too far. And the problem is once you put one too dark, the whole scale is wrong. And you end up having to redo it in this little area. That's why I've added some extra scales. If it gets messed up, just use it as practice and move on. So again, we want to do even wash.
We're trying to control the puddles as much as possible. And you want to try to do it with one hit. The, the, the bounty towel is only good for hovering above a dot and letting it go up in. You don't want to blot. But that's pretty good for the first one. So now the next one I have to do the same exact saturation. But I'm skipping it because this is still wet. So instead of doing my orange and mud, I'm going to switch to yellow and mud. And I can put it right in the same area here. Get rid of that. Mix it right in here. I'm kind of mixing red and I made my own brown over here because somebody's brown was too red in there. And you can spread it out if you feel like there's too much paint in one area. That's why we have such a big mixing area. I'm going to add a little more yellow, a little more water. I think I'm getting pretty good now. So again, you want to test over here how it's going to be. And if it should be the same saturation as the one over here. So you got to really spread it out and look. Because remember, watercolor dries a little lighter. I think it's still a little too dark. So I'm going to try another test over here. That's better. Now that matches the saturation. So then I can go in here and place my yellow plus mud. This is really good practice for that even wash technique. If you try to fix it too much, you're going to have it be worse. It's better to have a little puddle than go back over it too much. That wasn't as good as that, but that's fine. Now I'm going to skip the green and go to the blue. And I can leave this pile right in the middle. And get some blue. And I'm going to have blue and mud over here. So same thing, I want to test it. I feel like it's slightly too dark. That's better. A great way to get hard edges is to hold your breath when you're doing it. I got a little bit of pigment in there I didn't mean to. But see how these are very consistent in saturation? When these are fully dry, I'll go back in with the violet plus, the green plus, and the orange plus. So if, if your picture, if anything's darker than this, then it's too much. So let me lift this up and show you. And then we'll get into the wax and salt, because these things need to dry. So you can go ahead and do the wax and the salt while that's happening. But you can see how the saturation here is very uniform. And I've tested it on test paper, which is really the key. This part's super fun, and we're going to incorporate this into the actual drawing, too. In these other squares, and I gave you extra, too, so you can test them out. This one's going to be wax, and this one's going to be salt. When you're doing the wax, you're going to use a pure color from the wheel. So it can be any of the 12 colors from the wheel. When you do the salt, you're going to mix brown and black. So mud mixed with black, so it's like a dark mud. So those are the color scheme, but they go backwards in technique. For the wax, you want to take your candle and rub it in here with quite a bit of pressure. But I don't like filling the whole square because you can't really see the paper that's not covered. So press down. You can write your name or whatever, make a texture. you got to press down enough to get some wax on there. And then in this case, you're going to pick a pure color. I'm, I'm just leaving my pile inside, my brown pile-ish here, because I'm going to need it for this part. So for the wax, remember you want your brush to be the same size as the area you're filling. Otherwise, you don't get a nice even wash. So I'm switching to a bigger brush because this is a bigger area. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose like a blue violet. And in this case, you have to use more saturation, a little bit, not really dark, but like a middle, middle saturation. Like, that's too dark. I don't want to go off the edge, you can't see it, but that's a little light. That's better. Okay, so now we have the wax, and in a few strokes, I'm going to paint right over the wax. And as you see, what I marked 
begins to move forward through the paint. It's a wonderful way to resist the paint without covering, without making just pure white. So when you're doing, let's say, a shiny carrot in your drawing, or you're doing um, something like a window in a, lance, in a linear perspective study, it's a great thing to fill it with wax. We also use that with ink a lot of the time. Now in the salt side, we're using mud and black. So I can go back to this mixture and I'll just do, I'll do another kind of a red. So I'm kind of trying to get my brown back here because it's I kind of lost my mud. I'd have to remix a mud in here. So I'm getting just back to brown. Now I need to add some black to it because I want it to be dark. So this is a mixture of mud and black, and that's something we're going to use in the actual painting a lot. In this case, you can't go too dark because you won't even see the effect. And you need a ton of water. So you kind of have to use both hands at the same time because one hand is grabbing the salt and the other hand is getting a big amount on a big brush to get in here. There has to be a puddle for this to happen. And it can't be too dark of a puddle. It's better to start the salt before you finish because if you wait till the whole thing's full, it, it might dry too much. So you get this gorgeous texture and you can put as much or as little salt as you want in there. What happens is the water is absorbed by the salt and it creates a really cool shape around each little salt bead. Some people like to fleck it off when it's dry, others just leave it on there. I leave it on there. The only time it's an issue is if it falls into a frame and then you have like salt in the bottom, but it's a really nice way to render things like stucco, things like uh, beach, sandy things. Um, so in our picture, even though the examples I'm showing you don't incorporate wax and salt, and a lot of them are too dark and don't have a lot of white, we're gonna use those. And we're gonna emphasize these earth tones more than what you see in the pictures. So you're going to have your own sort of push of interpretation, even though it is pretty much local color, but pushing more into neutrals and definitely drawing it accurately. So at this point, you would have to clean out your palette because there's no black in this part. Come back and do the orange, the green, and the violet because it's dry now. So I don't, maybe I'll go ahead and do those just so you can see the whole thing. But I'm going to stop soon because I'm going to have um, the drawing portion demonstrated but again do this as many times as you need to because they tend to be off they tend to be too saturated or uneven saturation so let's go back to my mud over here And now I got to do orange plus mud. That's a very uh, red mud. So again, I'm gonna. It looks red, so add green. Looks blue, add orange. So you get this totally neutralized mud. There we go. And I will definitely put a pile of that in this corner. So here's my mud again, and I'm gonna add. Uh, let's see, I'm on orange. This is why it was so important to get the wheel set up correctly to be in with on this on the palette so I got to test this I'll test over here too dark way too dark and not orange enough so that's the other thing is you gotta make sure that you're using the same amount of visually brown in each one so you have an essence of the color but not too much so I'm gonna do this one now And the goal is to get it really perfect and have even steps. I think I went a little crazy on that one. Problem is, you can't go lighter, but you can go darker. So I might be able to do another yellow plus mud here with maybe more yellow. This one's perfect. I think I went too dark. So I can either build up and make them all even, or I can just start over and do a lighter version. The only option when you overpaint something, and it's not a great option, but it's it, it's like a saving grace, is to just put water on top 
and wait about a minute and then you get your paper towel I had to find my paper towel and without getting a texture you can just go like that and blot once and sometimes you're able to salvage it it always looks a little bit weird because you have this little edge but see how much better that is now so then I would go down and do green green and mud always test it on the side that's the key if you don't test it you kind of are taking too much of a chance got some paint on there so as long as these are all each distinct that might need a little more blue in it but you can kind of see like you can see how light I'm doing this there's always a, a saving grace if you go light, but when you don't, it's kind of a lost cause. And that'll come into play with your longer study too. It's too dark. Color's good, but it's too dark. I should have tested that one more. So this is what you want your scale to look like. There's a hair in there. You gotta go sideways with a brush to get those. And then, like against the grain. So that's what you want your scale to look like. And then you have your wax and salt. The next video is going to be a gesture drawing for the earth tones. Bye.